Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome to another video. Today is the long-awaited, highly requested bookshelf tour. When I posted me organizing and decorating these bookshelves, a couple of you asked for a bookshelf tour and I really didn't think you guys would want that, but you do. So here we are and here I am explaining how I organize my bookshelves. It's a, it's a lot the way I organize them, but it works for my brain and that is all that matters. I'm just going to be going shelf by shelf. I'll go like across left to right each way, kind of. It differs a bit more when we get to these bottom two shelves, but we shall discuss that when we get there. I obviously I can't go full in depth on like every single book that's on every shelf. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> that's silly. But I think maybe I'll try and tell you guys like my favorite on each shelf, not like in depth, just my favorite and that's it and I probably have videos on those favorites but we got a lot of a lot of shelves to cover so let's just get right into it oh and you'll hear me talking but I'm probably gonna put a more close up of each shelf as I'm talking about it so you guys can see the specific ones and then ask questions about them in the comments if you want to uh, first is this one the top left shelf this is all of my adult classics we have my whole Jane Austen collection we have a little stack of mass market paperbacks with an assortment of adult classics and obviously my favorite book on the shelf is Emma by Jane Austen I rave and rave about this book I love it and I will probably die with it in my hands that is how much I love it at least be buried with it I'm a simple girl just give me Emma and I'm fine Okay, and then moving on over to the right, we have my children's classics, and this is a, a very interesting assortment of children's classics. Some of these aren't even specifically children's classics. They just look aesthetically pretty together, and some of them I received, like, at the same time, so in my brain they have always belonged together, even if genre-wise they don't. And then all the way to the right, is a stack of classic starts which my parents gave my sister and me. My mom read a lot of them to us when we were kids before we could like actually read for ourselves and they've ended up in my possession for the time being but I am not the sole owner of them as my sister would gladly remind us but they look really pretty on the shelf and I just love the little twisted stack that I made with them. I'm so proud of it every time I look at it. <laughs> And my favorite on this shelf is, of course, Little Women. It is the one turned out, and I just love the values of family and sisterhood and the perseverance of love that is portrayed in this novel. I'll just, I will always love Little Women. It's such a sweet story. Okay, and then moving on down, we have my biblical fiction shelf. I love, like, every single one of the books on this shelf, and the way that I have organized it is basically we start from the book, like, farthest in the past and then keep going. I don't know if that makes sense, but we have all of my Connelly Cosette books over here because they have to remain together, but we start with her first one, which is the earliest Christian, like it's the, the one set the earliest in the past, if that makes sense, with the exodus from Egypt. And then we keep going and like right here is where it becomes New Testament fiction and we go all the way through the books that deal with the early church and the foundation of the early church found in Acts. So like biblically chronological, that's the word I'm looking for. We go from Exodus to Acts. And my favorite on this shelf, mm, I'd have to say it's probably a tie between Wings of the Wind by Connell and Cazette and To Dwell Among Cedars by Connell and Cazette. And I can't pick because both of the female characters in those novels just equally captured my heart and made me love them instantly. So. Those would be my favorites on this shelf. And then moving over, we have the shelf that is like the weirdest organized, but it kind of also goes chronologically through time. We start with some Liz Curtis Higgs books set, I believe, in the 18th century of Scotland. Then we have some Revolutionary War fiction, basically just Heidi Chevaroli books. And then to the right of the lantern is books set in the 1800s. Whether that is set in Alaska or the continental US or England or whatever. That they're set in the 1800s. Some, some of them are Civil War fiction. And then my favorite on this shelf would have to be The Hidden Side by Heidi Chevaroli. I'm just going to show you guys the cover because it's not featured on the shelf. 
but I loved this book and I read it basically in one sitting one summer day. Oh goodness, that was a year and a half ago. Wow. And I just, I loved the story and the really important truths that it put out. And it's not talked about enough. I do believe that. The Hidden Side is not talked about enough. None of Heidi Chevrolet's books are talked about enough. <laughs> and then we move on to another shelf that I love, obviously, my World War II fiction shelf. But we start with Melanie Dobson over to the right, or excuse me, over to the left. And it just goes by like publication date and then after The Winter Rose, which was published this year, it kind of also goes by publication date-ish. I mean, I put Sarah Sundin's books together and then these two books are set in Paris. It seems to flow that way. And then the two books after The Paris Dressmaker are set in America during World War II. And then past the bookend, we have all of my World War II fiction that is not Christian. It is just World War II fiction. It's not authored by a Christian author. Great books though, obviously I only keep good books on my shelves. I try to. And my favorite on this shelf would once again have to be a tie between Hidden Among the Stars by Melanie Dobson and The Paris Dressmaker by Christy Cambrin. Hidden Among the Stars was my comfort book for a while. It is one of the books that got me into Christian fiction. And then The Paris Dressmaker is just like a tapestry of goodness and in writing. Like it's amazing and I can't wait to reread it eventually because I know I'll get so much more out of the story. Moving on, we have my contemporary fiction shelf. We do start with like a long collection of Francine Rivers kind of just progressing chronologically. If you can't tell, I order by chronological timeline. So we start with Redeeming Love, and which is set in the 1850s, and then go through The Atonement Child, which is set, I mean, it was, it's set in present day, but it's probably more like set in the 90s. And then after that, we kind of just have the books that really impacted me and really shocked me. That goes through like The Faith by Angela Hunt and then after that we have my romance books. The books like a lot of the books I read have romance in them but that's not the central focus of the plot and so that's where these contemporary fiction novels are purely focused on romance and the characters like falling in love. And so that's the distinction I made there. And my favorite on the shelf is, no surprise, Under the Magnolias by T.I. Lowe. Enough said there. <laughs> okay, and then we are going to move down to the shelf right below this because that'll conclude my fiction section. We have my little small collection of suspense fiction, The Shack, of course. Then we have some books by James L. Rubart. All of that on the left. And then on the right of the shelf, we have just like fiction. It's not Christian fiction, it's just fiction that I picked up, I've read, and I really do need to sort out which ones I want to keep and which ones I should give away because some of them I just know I'm never going to revisit and aren't even really beneficial for me to revisit. So I need to clean that out eventually. But my favorite on this shelf would have to be American Music by Jane Mendelssohn. I don't necessarily recommend this book, um, it's hard to explain what it's about. It was a very unique read and I wouldn't say I am worse off for having read it, but if you do decide to look into it, like proceed with caution because it's not a Christian book. Okay, and now we're going to move down to my Christian nonfiction shelf. This is not all the Christian nonfiction I own, but it is the ones that I enjoy enough to display. So to the left, we have basically just like devotional books. And then to the right, we have just regular books. And the books to the right are not, um, again, they're not all of the nonfiction that I've read, but they are the ones that I actually like. And I'm not the biggest fan of nonfiction. But yeah, my favorite on this shelf would have to be Falling Free by Shannon Martin. I think a little later this year I'm going to add this to my TBR and like mix it in so that I can reread it because I think it would be a great reread for the stage of life I'm in and I knew when I read it that I was going to reread it at later stages of life and be able to glean different things from it because I think I first read it as a junior in high school and 
probably by the time I'll reread it, I'll be a freshman in college. So two year difference, I think the lessons it will give me will be different than when I read it a year and a half ago. Okay, and then we're just going to do a very quick overview of my bottom two shelves. They're not the bottom bottom, but the bottom two shelves that have just storage stuff on them. But the bottom left shelf, I have like the majority of my kids fiction that I read when I was a kid. But anyway, we have all of that. And then on the shelf to the right, we have my entire, well, it's not complete, but all of the books I have in the Cherry Games collection that my grandma gave me. And then the whole Land of Stories series that I was obsessed with. <laughs> like when I was 11 and 12. I was literally obsessed with the Land of Stories series and when the last one came out, like the day it hit shelves in Barnes and Noble, I like begged my parents to take me to Barnes and Noble and I spent like over half my allowance on buying it brand new and it's just so funny to think that like that was the beginning of me <laughs> needing books the second they came out. <laughs> Only 11 year old me could see me now literally pre-ordering books left and right. She'd be happy that we still read and she'd be disappointed that we spend money so much. <laughs> so that is my entire bookshelf tour. Uh, I do have a small TBR shelf but I have shown it in other videos or I will show it in other videos. I might put a clip in over this voiceover now. Uh, and I basically, I just have it organized by color because I love the rainbow organization method, but I could never do it to my actual bookshelf. It just would mess with my brain. So I do it with my TBR because there's literally like no point not to, and I love it. So that's my TBR shelf and my whole bookshelf. And that's it. That's the tour. Let me know if this made sense to you guys. If you want me to go in depth about a certain shelf or about a certain book. I mean, there might be a video on it if it's about a certain book, especially a favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, whatever that is. Until then, bye!